Hey, you're at Steve Tech. Here we're going to start talking about how to check your bearing clearances properly, what your bearing clearances should be in general, and I'll give you a couple specific illustrations, and how to install your bearings. So one of your first things that you're going to do is you need to have good equipment. You can do this with a plastic gauge, but that is a real um, easy way of uh, possibly making a mistake and just being too general. So uh, we're gonna start checking the first things first. We're gonna do the mains. So we are going to check our main journal diameter with a micrometer. Then we actually set the gauge up to what the actual size of the journal is. So you can see here, this is uh, one of our sun gauges. We can set that thing up. See right there. We'll move that. So our gauge is now set up to exactly what the crankshaft size is. Now we can go right back over here to where the block is. Now we have installed all the bearings into the block. We've already checked the crankshaft and have determined that the crankshaft is correct size all the way through. But all the bearings are in the mains. Everything is torqued torque to the proper amount. So now we use the bearing gauge here. Now I'm going to show you some tech here that people, lot, most people just really don't understand or know. But let me look at the gauge here as we're checking our vertical clearance. So vertical clearance is straight up and down. Vertical clearance. We'll go right here. You can see that this has two and uh, six tenths clearance right now. All right, but what I wanted to talk to you about, uh, one of the things I want to talk to you about is the bearings in the block and in the connecting rod, we'll show you the connecting rod next, are not round. They're purposely made not round. So this bearing bore, you want to take that out, Dylan? This bearing bore right here is not round. It's made not to be round. None of them are round. No engine bearing in the block or in the connecting rod is ever round, period, ever. Reason being is as this uh, stretches, we always measure our vertical clearance right here, it's actually bigger right here, bigger at the parting line. It's machined and made into the engine bearing for that reason. And the reason is as the crankshaft tries to actually get pushed out of the the bottom of the block since it's upside down here so the caps trying to push away this dimension actually gets tight so it is naturally big it's machined into the bearing they are not round it is actually oval this would be your tightest spot when it's not running but as this is running and as it sees more power this grows like this which makes this shrink it's like taking a piece of tubing and crushing it it gets wider at one end narrower in the other Okay, so that is a big deal that people don't understand. Now, if we go over to our connecting rod right here, I'll show you that exact same thing. I'm going to show you a couple other things about, about that. And here it's a little easier to see on the gauge. We'll go all the way around this. Now, this is the vertical clearance. And that is at two, uh, two and a half. See the vertical clearance there? Now we just turn it to a little closer to 108. There you go, a little closer to 90. That would be 90 right there. And you can see that it is actually just under four and a half at that dimension. That is specifically because as this rod accelerates and actually has cylinder pressure on it, believe it or not, it actually shrinks up that, that bore and also shrinks up the bore as the piston goes over top dead center and pulls its way back down. It's always trying to make this housing bore out of round. When it goes out of round, it is always trying to make this tighter, which is also what breaks the rod bolts, if you ever have any problems there. Now, this is a pretty common setup, two and a half to three thousandths. We'll leave the connecting rods, that's a pretty sweet spot, in a steel connecting rod. Big horsepower stuff is usually going to have two and a half thousandths in that range. You can end up being um, 
a little bit tighter on some streetcar type stuff, but we're usually not in that range because we don't build a lot of small uh, horsepower stuff. We'd like to build the bigger stuff. So you're gonna be uh, two and a half on a steel rod. In my pro modified stuff, in the uh, like in my SMX engines with a big billet aluminum rod, and I'll show you this at another time in a different video. Uh, bearing clearances on the rods can get all the way up to six to seven thousandths of clearance, and four to five thousandths clearance on the mains. That's a common setup, but we have a lot of pump there, and the connecting rod is doing a lot of moving around. It gets out around right here a lot so that six seven thousandths of rod clearance is all uh because the housing bore moves a lot so we're always trying to keep the the bearing alive there <laughs> 